It is with great pleasure I call this meeting to order. I usually ask people to, to, to abstain from clapping and showing emotion, but, but I do want to thank you because I think I speak for everybody here who's tried to get this meeting started. Um, we weren't quite sure that you'd be clapping, so I thank you. Um, I've called the meeting to order. Will the clerk please read the call of the meeting and return of service? Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Town of Duxbury, Special Town Meeting Warrant, Tuesday, February 28th, 2023, at 7 o'clock p.m., Duxbury Schools Performing Arts Center, 73 Alden Street. Plymouth SS, greetings to the constable of the Town of Duxbury in said county. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the Town of Duxbury qualified to vote in elections and in town affairs to meet in the Duxbury Schools Performing Arts Center, 73 Alden Street, in said Duxbury on Tuesday, the 28th day of February, 2023, next at 7 o'clock p.m. for a special town meeting for the transaction of any business that may legally come before said meeting. And you are hereby directed to serve this warrant by posting attested copies thereof as prescribed by Mass General Law, Chapter 39, Section 10, and by Chapter 2, Section 2.3.1 of the Town of Duxbury General Bylaws, at least 14 days before the time of holding said meeting. Hereof fail not and make due return of this warrant with your doings thereon to the town clerk at the time and place of this meeting, given under our hands the sixth day of February, 2023, Fernando Guitart, Chair of the Select Board, Cynthia Ladd Fiorini, Vice Chair, Michael McGee, Theodore J. Flynn, Amy M. McNabb. Plymouth SS, February 8, 2023. Pursuant to the warrant, I have this day notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Duxbury herein described to meet at the time and place and for the purposes as described by the bylaws of the town. A true copy attested. Mitchell Lebret, Constable of Duxbury. Unless there's some objection, we will dispense with the reading of the warrant. Um, I'm going to ask people to please join with me in a Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll get on to the main part of the meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, one God, liberty, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, I will try to do this somewhat quicker than normal. Um, I think many people here have been to town meeting before. Um, very quickly, um, to let you know who's in the front of the room, on my left, your right, we have the, we have the Board of Selectmen. Uh, along with our town planner on that and on my right uh, your left we have the planning board you may have been expecting to see the finance committee because that's usually where they sit they've been moved to the front row and they are here in case any questions come up for them uh, on the platform with myself and I my name is John Tuffy I'm the moderator uh, we have our town clerk Susan Kelly and town council Jeffrey Blake. Um, this hall has been divided into six voting sections, uh, numbered as follows. Section one is the small section on the main floor to my left. Section two is the center section in the front. And section three is the small section in the front to my right. Section four is the section of the balcony in the rear to my left. And section five is the center section of the balcony. And section six is the section of the balcony of the balcony to my right. Um, I mention that because while we will be using electronic voting in this room, should the need occur, we will be doing hand counts. Each vote will be counted by, by a teller twice, and you will have to hold up your clicker uh, in order to have your vote counted. And gosh, after everything we've been through here, this electronic voting better work. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, microphones for your use are located at the back of the hall behind the center balcony, section five, at the foot of each of the balcony aisles where they meet the stairs down to the main floor and behind voting sections one and three on the main floor. Assisted li listening devices are available on the table next to the entrance on the main floor on the right if you need one. They are provided by the Municipal Commission on Disabilities and the fire chief has requested that I point out the fire exits. Um, from this room, there are two fire exits on the lower level of the auditorium, one to my immediate right, which is your left, and one to my left, where you entered the room. There are also two fire exits on the upper level of the room in the rear of the hall. I'd ask that, I also request that all cell phones be turned off while the meeting is in session, except for public safety officials. And for your information, this meeting is, is taped. Uh, a couple of things that I guess we should go over. The first is upon checking in, um, if available, you received a, a handheld voting device. The voting device entitles you to be seated in the voting section. If you have an issue with your voting device, please go to the teller's desk, which is in the hallway immediately outside the main entrance of the room, and they will issue a new one. If, and, and it, yes, clearly at this point in time, they will say, gee, I'm sorry, but you need to go to the other room because we are out of voting devices. There were 900 that were distributed. Uh, voting process will be as followed, follows. After, deba after debate is over, I will call for a vote. A light will go on, a light will go on next to me. Um, and there it is right now. Um, you will have 20 seconds to vote. When the 20 seconds have passed, I will announce the votes and we will, the light will go out. To use your handheld device, press one for yes, two for no. Number three can be used to clear a vote. The screen on the handheld device will display a one for yes and two for no. And when you vote, if the vote has been received, it will show up on your screen. At this point in town meeting, we customarily vote to, to give permission to speak to town employees and officials who are not registered voters in the town of Duxbury. Accordingly, I will entertain a motion to allow our town employees and officials to speak should the, nation, should the, should the occasion arise. Do I have a motion? Motion's been made and seconded. I think it's probably an opportunity to use our handheld devices um, when the light goes on, one for yes, two for no. Mr. Moderator. Mr. We Mr. Weiler. Yes, Mr. Weiler. Make sure he mentions that we're in the remote room and that we are going to be counted too. And he has to wait for the total count for our vote. Yes, we've taken that up. One for yes, two for no, and if you voted, you should see you should see a little sign on the little message on the bottom of your screen that uh, says received. There seems to be a long delay. There's a long delay in communicating with you. Interesting. We'll uh, we'll leave extra time when we call for a vote. So thank you very much. You've, you've, we have a vote. We have 609 yes and 117 no. The motion does carry. Mr. Weiler, we're waiting for your vote. The motion. <laughs> Excuse me. The motion, the motion was to allow uh, town employees and officials who are not registered voters in the town of Duxbury uh, 
to speak to town meeting. Do you have a number? We voted unanimously in favor. Okay, thank you. Uh, to go over some procedures, this meeting is governed by the That's from Mr. Weiler. It's not my, it's not an upset vote, upset town voter. Yes, Mr. Weiler. Okay, thank you. Can people hear me? If you All right, I'll try to speak up. How's that? Thank you. Um, procedures this meeting is This meeting is governed by the statutes of our town bylaws and town meeting time. In addition, I suggest we follow the following procedures so that we can conduct business in an orderly fashion. After I've announced that we will consider an article, the article will be moved by the will be moved and there uh, will be moved by the finance committee. And I take that back because this is a citizens' petition. The article originally will be moved by. Um, Council for the citizen that pr proposed this article. Um, I'm hearing myself in a delayed manner, and it's certainly confusing. Um, I will give the proposer of the article the opportunity to make in making his or her motion remarks, and in those cases where there's an organized rec organized opposition, I will give the opportunity for them to speak. I am asking that the opening remarks be held to 10 minutes, uh, and anybody who wishes to speak or ask a question, uh, they, keep their, they keep their remarks down to five minutes. Any lengthy or complicated motions or amendments should be submitted in writing so that we know precisely what is being voted upon. Um, I guess the only other thing I want to mention is a motion for the previous question, uh, sometimes known as move the question. It is, it is a motion to end debate. It does take a two-thirds vote. It is a useful motion in town meetings. There are some concerns, however, that it can be used unfairly or abused, and to that end, uh, I will follow a procedure that I followed in the past, and that is, I will not accept a motion to move the question from someone who has just finished speaking on an article, eliminating the move, the question as a vehicle to get the last word. And second, I will not accept a motion for the previous question until after both sides have been heard and there's been some level of debate. That having been said, I'm going to ask for a motion. Could I ask you to come up and speak into the, speak into the microphone so people can hear you? It's been pointed out that uh, there's a time delay between here and the other room. Uh, Christopher Davidson, I move Article 1 as printed in the warrant. Second. I have a motion and a second. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to tell you what will be happening. Uh, we do have a motion for the article as presented in the warrant. There also will be some amendments that are going to may be made to that. 
Um, we are going to, I know there are the three of them that are coming up. Uh, we will deal with all three amendments uh, and after we have dealt with those three amendments and you vote them up or down, whatever town meeting decides, we will then come back to the main motion and after we vote the main motion, after we have dealt with the amendments, we will have made a decision as a town. Um, do we have a, do we, do we have a report from the planning board on this article? Good evening, my name is Keith McDonald. I am clerk of the planning board. At a regular scheduled meeting at the, of the planning board on Monday, February 13th, the board voted four to zero to recommend against the above reference citizens petition with the following comments. Member Kristen Rapp indicated that regulations need to be in place for any business allowed in the RC district and that this needs to be a bigger conversation. Member Keith McDonald said that the Zoning Board of Appeals needs to have some oversight and that the special permit is the best avenue for allowing a bed and breakfast in the RC district. Chairman Scott Casagrande said that allowing a business by right in the RC district would be a mistake. Member, for, <coughs> excuse me, member Jennifer Turco said she agrees with Mr. Casagrande that allowing businesses used by right in the RC district would be a mistake. She said if the zoning bylaws about bed and breakfast short-term rentals are changed, it should be a lengthier process through the town working with town council. Thank you. Thank you. If you could just please introduce yourself. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Christopher Davidson. I'm counsel for uh, owners at 160 Marshall Street. Um, thank you very much. Just so people know, Mr. Davidson is in fact a registered voter here in the town of Duxbury, so there is no need to ask permission for him to speak. Um, he is going to, at this point, talk about the overall article and as well as the three motions that will be made for amendments um, it's a chance to, for, they, for him to put what this issue is in, in some level of context. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been a very hot topic here in town, and you maybe you've read some of it in the Clipper, or you've talked to someone about it. Um, I just wanted to start just by thanking the, uh, the Board of Selectmen. We had a hearing uh, last night, and they gave some input about it. I'd also like to thank the Planning Board. Uh, we had a pretty vigorous debate. And um, I just want to start by going through um, some issues. Um, the way I'm going to present this tonight is I'm going to talk first about the current bylaw and zoning scheme. And I'm going to talk about how our current laws are in effect here in Duxbury. And then I'm going to talk about what's on the warrant. And then I'm going to talk about amendments that will be made on the floor tonight uh, to correct uh, some of these issues or address some concerns that we've had as a result of some hearings and what's been reported in uh, local papers. So I want to start at a very basic level to let you know that rentals in general in Duxbury, you want to look at it in terms of uh, over 30 days or under 30 days. Because if you're over 30 days, it's a long-term rental, and that's something you can do. You don't need permission from the town to do that. But when you have something that's under 30 days, whether it's two days, two weeks, three weeks, 28 days, that's where a special permit comes in and the town gets involved. 
Special permits are, are identified in our zoning bylaws. And there are 12 items that uh, you can go before your Zoning Board of Appeals to get approval to do certain things. So I'm just going to name a few of them. But in a residential district, you can have accessory apartments, cemeteries, hospitals, golf courses, riding stables, and private nonprofit clubs. Bed and breakfast is another one. And I would tell you that bread and, bed and breakfast is a defined term. So you have to meet that definition in order to even be considered for approval by the ZBA. You have to check off a number of boxes when you go through a special permit process. I've listed a few of them here. Uh, you have copies of a certified plot plan, floor and elevation plans, complete site plan, architectural elevations, architectural floor plans. You can submit a brief to explain why you want to do this. Letters of support and also photographs. The reason why I'm telling you this is because even if you check off all of those boxes, it is still not your decision to operate your property the way you want to, even if there's a special permit. It remains at the discretion of the ZBA. So you may be in a situation where you have more letters of support than you do for opposition, and it's still not allowed. The definition of a bed and breakfast here in Duxbury currently is a structure originally built as a dwelling in which the operator resides and not more than four guest units are offered for overnight lodging with or without meals. There's a lot in that definition, so I'm going to break it down very briefly. It's a structure that must have been a dwelling when it was built. It has to be owner occupied, up to four guest units. Meals are optional, and the intended use is for overnight or short-term stays. So that's the definition that you have to meet. So how is this working in practice in town right now? The number of permitted bed and breakfasts in Duxbury. One. There is a state scheme where you have to report as a short-term rental. And it is public record at showing that you are holding yourself out as a short-term rental. The number of short-term rentals registered with this state, sorry, with, with Duxbury in this state, is 48. That was a number that we got online, publicly available as of last Friday. The number of applicants for a special permit over the last couple of years, my understanding, is, was two. The number of special permits that were recommended was zero. Again, we have one bed and breakfast in town. It's the one place that's permitted that you can go to. If you have family visiting, friends. The fact is that short-term rentals, they're already here in our town. And that's why we're here tonight, is to address what to do with it. What I'm about to show you are the short-term rentals that are registered with the state. These do not identify the people who do it. It just identifies the streets in our community that they're located on. Samoset Road, Gurnett Road, Mayflower Lane, Hummock Lane, Washington Street, Ocean Road, Ocean Ave, North Street, Pine Point Road, Abrams Hill Road, Ocean Road, Washington Street, Marshall Street, Pine Point Road, Powder Point Ave, Plymouth Ave, Bay Ridge Lane, King Caesar Road. The lists go on and on. This shows you that this is already going on in our community. These are listed on VRBO and B&B. And B &B. As of last Friday, when we were looking at this, there's 13 of them currently available for rent on VRBO. There's another 13 available for rent on Airbnb. And there's an additional one that was on We Need a Vacation. The residents of Duxbury have adjusted to the modern rental landscape, but the bylaws have not. That's the overriding purpose of tonight's proposal. 
Rent, and renting is not new. This is, this is not something that's just happened over the last year or two. This has actually been going on for the last eight years, documented through Airbnb and VRBO. We were at a planning board meeting and we, we, uh, the, the planning board had indicated that it, it was working very hard on this issue. And, and this was an issue that came before them beginning in 2019. But we're here tonight to address it. On the postings that are before Airbnb and VRBO, uh, you can see where there are short-term rentals. We had a great girls weekend uh, in, in January 2023. So-and-so was an excellent host during our New Year's stay close to the beach. July 2019, home met all of our needs close to the beach and the house was everything you need for a wonderful stay. I have ones from 2017, 2019, 2015. We were in town for a big chill weekend with friends. Highly recommend as weekend getaway place. The takeaway from these, uh, these postings is that people are coming to stay in Duxbury. They may be from out of town, but they may also be family members and friends. These are positive experiences and they stimulate the local business and the economy. All of this is occurring without any town approval or oversight. So the problem is that the town is underinformed about current rentals. As a result of this, unpermitted uh, rental properties are out there. They don't have oversight. We don't know who is running these properties, how they are run, or if they present public health or safety hazards. And the biggest problem that all of you should, be, should really think about because it affects you, the town is leaving money on the table in terms of taxes. State law provides communities like Duxbury can charge a local excise tax of up to 6% on short-term rentals. So the 13 Airbnbs that we saw last Friday, the average price was $476 a night. If you take those 48 registered short-term rentals at that average, and you're only renting it for a third of the year, there's $2,764,608 in total revenue. The taxes are this, for three months only, it's a, a, about $165,000. So if you play that out through the entire year, you're approaching half a million dollars. That's taxes that are being left on the table. The proposal. The proposal is to move the definition, is to move bed and breakfast from a special permit into as of right. Tonight there will be amendments to put additional limits on a bed and breakfast, and I will get into that. And the definition of a bed and breakfast is a structure originally built as a dwelling in which the operator resides and not more than four guest units are offered for overnight lodging with or without meals. That's the current definition. The definition on the warrant before you currently adds in combination with any accessory structure attached or detached from the dwelling. The intent there was to, was to capture another structure that you may have on your property. Maybe it's a barn. Uh, it, it could be some other habitable structure that you would be able to have someone in there. there an amendment tonight will be, will, a motion to amend will be submitted tonight to actually take that out and simplify it. Just work with the definition that the town already has, but continue to make it as of right. So why, why, why take that language out from the warrant? It's because it's responsive to the concerns that the people have voiced since the warrant was issued. And it's to avoid conflict with the town as to what constitutes habitable living. So tonight's amendment to the warrant will be requesting that bed and breakfast is as of right, but it also has no more than two persons staying in any one guest unit and no more than one off-street parking space for each guest unit, which does not create a public safety or public health hazard. You should know what other towns are doing. This is not uncommon. Chatham. Chatham has this as of right. 
They have their bylaws. And uh, it's located within a residence. It's operated by the owner-occupant, food service, and compliance with the Board of Health. They have regulations that are going through with the other committees. But the point is, it's as of right, and it will have controls on it. Yarmouth. Yarmouth is another community that has uh, bed and breakfast as of right. You have to register annually with the Board of Health, subject to health regulations and inspections, rental certificate displayed on property with 24-hour contact information, trash removal. Th th there's a number of restrictions that, that are placed there. Marshfield, they're doing it as of right. And, they have two guest units allowed in all residential districts as of right, and the only restriction is a minimum of one parking space per rental unit. So the issue here, and I think the major concern in this room, is probably about oversight and what you can do. In general, in, the, in these other communities, in our community, these are dealt with with fines and penalties. It's outside the scope of the zoning bylaws that they're at issue tonight. They just they're not a part of the, the zoning bylaws. But oversight can be enacted by the town's enforcement officer. And there are other considerations that could be discussed tonight. F uh, fire permits being required, food inspections being required, septic inspections, notice to the town, parking, occupancy. Other controls that already exist, there, there is language under 410.2, and it talks about nuisance. So there are mechanisms that can, that can help give controls about this. But the first step, if I, if I could. Tonight we are not going to talk about what sorts of enforcement and, and other items we could impose. That's not what we're here for. We have, a, we have a warrant that talks about very specific items and those are the items that we're taking up tonight. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Um, before we move on to the amendments, I, Mr. Guitart from the Board of Selectmen has something to say, and I know that the Planning Board would like to respond as well, and then we'll start to deal with the amendments. Uh, Fernando Guitart, uh, Chair of the uh, Select Board. Uh, the Select Board voted unanimously against this article. The current Zoning, our current zoning bylaws allow for bed and, bed and breakfast by special right. This amendment removes that requirement for special permit and basically you can, by right, set up a bed and breakfast. All right. And we heard three reasons why it's being proposed. One is everybody's doing it anyway, so why not allow it? Right? Let's allow it. Everybody's doing it. Doesn't sound like a very good reason to me and to the board. Secondly, there's a bit about lost revenue, lost income. There's nothing in our bylaws right now which allows us to gather that lost income. And then the last but most important reason why we voted against this article was by going from a special permit to by right. It removes the most important thing that we as a community have, and is that it's the right for public hearing, the opportunity for public comment. That's what it essentially means when we remove that special permit one of the motions is to remove that special permit requirements for bed and breakfast. It removes the opportunity for the community to provide public comment. It removes the opportunity for a public hearing. And that is why we voted against this article, and we strongly recommend that you do so as well. Thank you. Um, now for the planning board. Who I was going to trip on that. Uh, Scott Casagrandi, the chairman of the planning board. Um, I uh, agree with everything 
that uh, has gone on, Fernando has mentioned from the select board's uh, standpoint. In addition, I would uh, add uh, the planning board, as you already heard, voted 4-0 uh, uh, against this change as well. Um, within the residential district, which is our most... Sure thing. Let's see if I get it closer. Within the residential district, which is our most closely held district here in the town, uh, where we have our uh, the greatest restrictions, the residential district permitted uses and structures currently in the residential district are detached single-family dwellings, religious or educational uses, those two are dictated by the state, accessory use and accessory structures on the same lot which are customarily incidental to a single-family residence, a trailer for temporary residential occupancy only for a period totaling not more than six months on a premises whose dwelling has been destroyed by fire with a permit from the zoning enforcement officer or the keeping of one service type vehicle not to exceed 10,000 pounds gross weight by a resident who carries on a trade profession away from his or her premise. That is all we allow by right in the residential district. Everything else we talk about, whether it's the bed and breakfast as proposed here, or an accountant's office, or an insurance agent's office, or any other type of business that wants to operate, can come forward, go through the ZBA, through the special permit process, and get their approval for their permit to do so. Bed and breakfasts are allowed here in town as they are written now, and as is being somewhat proposed by the changes, the definition of the bed and breakfast would go right back to what we have currently. They are allowed in town, but you cannot, we do not allow businesses to operate in the residential district without the special permit process, thus opening it up to the neighbors and the public to have a say in that business operating next to their residential property. Other than that, within the residential district, it is really, really just us living in our homes. And thank you. And just for the record, I would point out that the Finance Committee voted on this, and I believe the, it was if you, a unanimous vote. Um, yes, the Finance Committee um, were the, took up the article and voted um, eight uh, unanimously against the article. The uh, conversation revolved around the fact that there were no um, additions to the bylaw that would have any um, rules that it would be attached to it, that it would just uh, strip us of all of the regulations that are now attached through special permit, and um, we did not feel that that was appropriate. Thank you. Mr. Davison, you have an, you have an amendment. Yes, um, I move to amend section 302 definitions by deleting in combination with any accessory structure attached or detached from the dwelling. That was the additional language that was in the warrant for the definition of bed and breakfast. And as I indicated during my opening that uh, we're seek I'm moving to have that uh, deleted. Is there a second? second? We have a motion that's been seconded. Um, are there any questions or comments about this? Um, so to be clear, we have before you a motion that if you vote yes, we'll return the definition back to what it was um, and there will be no change. Is everybody clear on that? No. Okay. Sir. I, I'm Wayne Dennison, 320 Standish Street. I'm the chair of the zoning board. I've been the chair of the zoning board for the last 10 plus years. I am not speaking on behalf of the zoning board. I'm speaking on my own behalf. And as a lawyer who has done zoning and real estate work for the last 30 years. 
the amendment that was just proposed was incomprehensible to me. <laughs> the bylaw exists as the bylaw. No one has changed the bylaw yet at all. What has in fact occurred is there is a warrant article that proposes a change to the bylaw, which we are now being asked to vote on language that strikes language from the proposed warrant article. The reason that people were confused by that proposal is it is by definition confusing. <laughs> if they would like to change the language of the warrant article to bring it back in alignment with the existing bylaw, so be it. But it has no effect at all on our current warrant article. Because unless and until this town meeting changes the language of our bylaw, the bylaw stays in place. I am hopeful that that is modestly more clear, but I am sure that Mr. Blake, who is our town council, can make it even more clear than I did. Good evening, everybody. Can you, can everybody up there hear me? Yeah, I, I rarely get told that I, I don't speak loud enough. Um, thank you for having me here tonight, and it's great to see a lot of different people. So I, I will try to explain this a little bit. Um, as you see on your warrant, there was a number of amendments to be made to your bylaw. They were proposed. The warrant was published and closed. After that happened, the proponent uh, got a lot of feedback, I understand, from the, from the people. So rather than continue on with what they had proposed on the warrant, and, th and when I say that, I'm talking about the first section that talks about definitions. He decided that they would like to essentially go back to the, 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 the definition that the town currently has. So what he's doing, because the warrant and the motion before the, 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 the town uh, has a different definition, he is amending that to bring it back in line with what you already have. If you vote on this definition, on this amendment, it will just change the definition in the warrant to the one that you already have. The next motion that I understand that's going to be presented to the meeting will be whether or not you want the special permit requirement in your bylaw to stand or if you want to make a bed and breakfast a, a by right use. I don't know if that's cleared that up for, for you, but I hope I at least got to some people. <laughs> right, but I'm just trying to explain. Yes, that. there are. Yeah, I know. Huh? Mrs. McNeil. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Amy McNabb, I'm a member of your select board. I think if anybody knows me, you know that I am very much opposed, as our chair said, to this bylaw. And may I help maybe some of the voters here? I do have a bit of experience with zoning, and um, so I'm hoping only to suggest how I might vote on this amendment, which will probably be yes, it's benign, it does nothing. It only puts it back to where it is currently. So this first amendment is completely benign, um, so I'm going to vote yes. 
On the Second Amendment, I will vote no. And on the article, I Mrs. will vote no. Mrs. McNair, we'll deal with the second motion when we get there. OK. Just giving you the cheat sheet ahead of time. I, Thank I, you. <laughs> well, I think we all appreciate your help. My concern is it will just further confuse rather than clarify the situation. So what we're voting on is the very first amendment, whether you want to. So I'm going to call for, call for a vote at this point in time. Call for a vote. If you want to leave the, if you want to leave the current language as it is, vote yes. If you want to see the change that was proposed in the warrant article, vote no. When, Whoop, hold it. Turn the voting off. Yes, voting, voting yes puts it back to the way it, it currently is. Voting no will, will endorse the change that's been asked for. Do we all agree on that? Mrs. McNabb. Okay, thank you. So, I'm going to call for a vote now. All those in favor of the vote, push one. All those opposed, press two. Amendment one. This is Amendment 1. Only Amendment 1 is on the floor right now to be voted on. Please go to the microphone. Change. We're conducting a hand count. Can you hear me now? Thank you, Mr. Okay. Weiler. When you say vote for the change, the entire warrant is a change. So are we voting for the definition in the warrant? Or is voting for the change the amendment to keep things the way they are now? So the, the amendment that is on the floor is only speaking to the definition of bed and breakfast. In the article, the warrant article that the proponent is proposing this evening, the original article changed that definition. This First Amendment, what you're voting on right now, only seeks to put the language back to what it was before in, the, in our current zoning bylaw. So again, a, a, it's a benign. If you vote one, it, it's just putting it back to what it was. OK, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Please. Bob Hayes, Potter Point Avenue. I just disagree. What it seems to say to me is you just, the, the amendment that, of the amendment that I'm looking at says you just delete a portion of the new proposed section 302, but it leaves in the new proposal by just taking out that language. Then not more than four guest units are offered overnight. I think it is not putting it back where it was because we're only looking at the warrant change. And it does not do that. It leaves in some of the language that the proponent wanted. Oh. Mr. Hayes, I, I believe there is some confusion on your part. Um, 
what we, what we were asking people to vote on, and we will revote this in just a minute because it has become so confused. We will, we will be revoting this in just a second because things became terribly confused. Um, town Council is, is on his way over. I believe he can explain this certainly better than I've proven I can. Good evening again. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think some of the confusion may be that what the handouts that you have are not the definitional section, but rather a, a, a special permit section which talks about a bed and breakfast that does X, Y, and Z. Uh, the definitions in your, currently in your bylaw, I will read it to you, of a bed and breakfast is a structure originally built as a dwelling in which the operator resides and not more than four guest units are offered for overnight lodging with or without meals. This was done in 1987. So the proposed amendment on the floor that you're voting for would, change, would, would, would mirror the definition that you currently have. So that having been said, and since we had stopped the voting part way through, we will vote right now. Um, all those in favor, press 1. All those opposed, press 2 and the light comes on. Voting is now open. Yeah. Mr. Weiler, I hope you heard that. We are voting on, on the motion one right now. Coming towards the end of voting, one for yes, two for no. Voting is closed. And we need to wait for the other room to come down with their, with their numbers. Go ahead, Mr. Weiler. We had trouble with the hand counts. We're going to a paper ballot. We'll be counting shortly. Thank you. Yes, friend. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Okay. All right. 
Okay. You got a number for me? Okay. So we're waiting for the results from the other room. Hello? Hmm? Yes. Hello? 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 It says they haven't finished counting. Hello? Really? Okay. 
Okay. My problem is when I put it down and hung up, it was inactive for so long. Okay. Almost there. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm still here. Got it. I, I'm looking at the number. I'm serious. I'm serious. I think I got people walking out the door. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, the motion, the motion carries. The final vote was 823 yes, 60 no. Um, Mr. Davison, maybe we have a motion, uh, motion number two. Again, we're talking about amending the main motion. Thank you. Second motion is to amend section 410.1, section 7, by adding the following. Bed and breakfast having, this is the additional language, no more than two persons staying in any one guest unit, no more than one off-street parking space for each guest unit, which does not create a public safety or public health hazard. So to be clear, this is a motion to amend bed and breakfast as of right. So the warrant already has it as of right. What this motion is doing is it's qualifying the as of right by adding the additional language about staying in any one guest unit, you can't have any more than two, can't have more than two people, and also the parking. That's additional language that was not in the warrant that we are uh, moving to amend. Thank you. Is there a second? We have a, we have a motion and a second. Do we have a question? Jack Kent Jr., 113 uh, Tremont Street. Had to think, no, 1351. I moved from the other way. 1351 Tremont Street. <laughs> Um, I, I would like the definition of a guest unit, and I also want to know if that guest unit is attached to the main structure. Do we have an answer? It's Mr. Davison. I think on the, on the second question as to guest unit uh, being part of some other structure, it, it, it's within the definition of bed and breakfast, so it's within the main structure. It's not to go on to anything else. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I'm trying to get the, uh, the definitions here. Okay. Right. Sure. Guest unit so is a if, room if or could, suite of rooms suitable for a separate rental or occupancy in a hotel, motel, or similar establishment. Any room or suite of rooms containing a stove plus either both a refrigerator and a sink shall be considered a dwelling unit. That's, that's how it's read right here in the definitions. I, I understand. I 
don't have the right answer. I'm not even sure I understand the question. What was the question? Yes. Um, guest unit under the definitions is drafted as follows. Guest unit is a room or suite of rooms suitable for separate rental or occupancy in a hotel, motel, or similar establishment. Any room or suite of rooms containing a stove plus either or both a refrigerator and a sink shall be considered a dwelling unit. That's the definition that they have. But this is in a dwelling that was built as a residence. Yes. Now you're putting a guest unit with a stove and a sink in a dwelling that was built as a residence. Guest unit is the term that's already in the existing definition of bed and breakfast. Yes, 310. Bed and breakfast is defined as a structure originally built as a dwelling in which the operator resides and not more than four guest units are offered for overnight lodging with or without meals. And that's what, and that, and again, to be clear, that's what's in the current bylaw, town's bylaw. Mrs. McNeil. So let me, again, just try to assist, and first let me make a comment. This is why we don't do zoning this way. This is why zoning is. <laughs> there is a process. You have a board in place, the planning board. They thoughtfully and carefully match our zoning bylaws with the master plan of this town. And they develop bylaws that are consistent with the direction that the residents want the town to go in. And that is their job. And that is why the planning board brings these things forward. And we don't get into these conversations where we're trying to find definitions on the fly. And what does this mean? And what does that mean? So if I can, and I don't presume for you to care how I vote, but I'm going to vote no on this amendment, and I'm going to vote no on this art, this uh, warrant article. Thank you. Hi, my name's Mark Smith. I live on King Caesar Road, and I just want to say I think it's really I. I don't disagree with your vote, but I disagree that you have the right to express it from the podium to influence the group. Mr. Smith, um, just, as a, just as a comment, um, the idea of people coming and speaking at town meeting and suggesting how they will vote and offering that advice to other people and asking if they would vote the same way has gone on for as long as I can remember. And I started to go to town meeting. <laughs> sir, let, sir, sir, let me just finish what I was gonna say. Um, I, I grew up before cable TV. Town meeting was the entertainment that we went for. And, and so this goes back quite some time. So I find nothing offensive in what I, I can Mc appreciate that. I think the difference is if a town person says, I'm here to express myself, and this is how I feel about it. I think that's one thing, but I think when you're hearing it from town officials, I feel like it's too strong. I think, I think when the committees come out and they say, this is our opinion after studying it, I get that. You've already voted in effect. But then to say, this is how to think about the change to this warrant, and this is how I think you should think about it, I, I, don't, I just think you should depersonalize it because I just don't think it's right for you to say, I'm gonna vote this way. All right, Mr. Smith. You've... That's my opinion. Okay. So, my sense is we're ready for a vote on this. Yes, we are. Okay. 
Again, we are, we are voting on the amendment. We will be voting on the main motion when we get through this and one more amendment. So, um, all those in favor of this amendment, press one. All those opposed to this amendment, press two. The green light is on, please vote. Voting is, is over. We'll be waiting for results from the other room. Yes, sir. Go ahead, friend. Both in this room are five in favor, 84 opposed.
Okay. So the results are in. The motion fails. 86 to 803. My understanding is, Mr. Davidson, that, that, we, that we're not going to be making the third motion. Is that accurate? So, so now we're going to go back to the main motion, which we've made some amendments. Mrs. Sullivan, chair of the Finance Committee, will be making that motion right now. Good evening. All right. So, clear as mud. Let's do it. To see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaws, Article 410 Residential Compatibility District, Section 410.1 Permitted Use and Structures, which thereby, um, nope, we're not going to do any thereby's. Uh, section 302 Definitions, Bed and Breakfast. I know that I'm reading the same thing that existed before, but let's just go with it. A structure originally, originally built as a dwelling in which the operator resides and not more than four guest units are offered for overnight lodging with or without meals. So that's the first. Do you want to, are you splitting this or are you doing the whole thing? Oh, Do the whole thing. thing. Okay. 410.1, permitted uses and structures. Residential compatibility district shall include all areas designated on the zone, Duxbury zoning map dated March 13, 1973, as revised and amended to date on file in the office of the town clerk as residential compatibility district established by section 201. The following regulations shall apply. In a residential compatibility district, no building or accessory structure shall be erected or altered, and no building, accessory structure, or land shall be used for any purpose or in any manner other than is permitted and set forth herein. One, detached single family dwelling. Two, religious. Three, educational. Four, accessory use and accessory structures on the same lot which are customarily incidental to single family residents. Five, trailer for temporary residential occupancy only for a period totaling not more than six months on a premises whose dwelling has been destroyed by fire with a permit from the zoning enforcement officer. Six, the keeping of one service type vehicle not to exceed 10,000 pounds gross weight by a resident who carries on a trade profession away from his, her premises. Seven, bed and breakfast, period. Two thirds vote of town meeting is required to approve the article. That's it. I need a second. Do we have a second. Second, okay. We have a motion and a second. So, um, if you are in favor of making that change that gives people by right the ability to have a bed and breakfast, you will vote yes. If you are opposed to that, you will vote no. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. My sense is that people know how they're going to vote. And before we move on to the vote, I have an announcement. Um, will, will the, I have a quick announcement, but it's important because we have two vehicles that are blocking a bus. Um, if you are the owner of a white Lexus, um, USV 460, or a gray Infinity 14RB11, 14RB11, uh, I'm gonna ask you to vote, and Ted, please, Please, please go and move your vehicle. So I think I know where we are. Excuse uh, me, Mr. Moderator, excuse me. May I interrupt? I apologize. Yes, go ahead. Right I have ahead. a question of a technical nature. My understanding is that if town meeting considers a motion to change the bylaw, 
and turns down the motion that we are unable to address the issue in the motion for two years. Is that true? I will ask our town council to weigh in on that. M Mr. Moderator, if I might, um, and town council can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, if town meeting defeats this article, it cannot be brought back to town meeting for two years except by the planning board. Ah, very good. Because I understand there's a recodification of the zoning bylaws and I wouldn't want this meeting to take an action which prevented us addressing it during recodification. Thank you very much. Thank you. Should we try that again? Are we ready for a vote? Okay. Do we need to reread the motion? Okay. Um, voting is now open. Press one for yes, two for no, one for yes to change, two for no to keep our bylaw as it currently is. And now if you own now if you own that Lexus, please move it. Voting is closed in this room, in the, in the auditorium. <laughs> Sir, can we turn the microphone on the back? Go ahead. L ladies and gentlemen, I'd encourage you not to leave because we have seen stunts in the past where there has been a seldom used motion to reconsider that has been employed. So everybody please stick around until we're through. Thank you. And if I could, while we have everybody here, if I could while we have people here, I would just, I would just add that there was a change in the bylaw sometime a few years ago. Hello, 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 hello. Just as while we're waiting for the results in the other room, I just wanted to share with you that a change was made to the bylaw a few years ago as a result of a government study committee dealing with reconsideration. If you're really bored and having trouble sleeping, it's in section two of the general bylaws. It, but what it does say, uh, among other things, is that the, a motion to be, to be re, for reconsideration is left to the judgment of the moderator, and in order for reconsideration to take place, we need to have, we need to be shown that there was information that was not made available at the time of the vote. So while I'm not trying to get everybody to leave, I assure you no additional information has come, to, come out in the last 10 seconds. I don't, would not accept a re motion for reconsideration. Yes, Mr. Weiler.
What do you got? Two. Thank you. So we do have a we do have a we do have a vote. The motion fails to carry. It was 50 yes and 840 no. I'm happy to say that completes the that completes the business for this special town meeting and I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Do I have a second? I have a second. All those in favor of adjournment say aye. All those opposed, ayes have it. Thank you very much. You have all been more than patient with us.